Charles Manson, and your kid is Jesus. Yeah, that would be actually an interesting episode. Psychological study? Of, yes, psychology. <laughs> yes, because there's been times where Rainey and I have been standing next to each other watching the same race and have recalled it somewhat differently. Mm-hmm. And, and we're standing right next to each other watching the same race. And, you know, with my role at the shop, I don't, I don't have a kid out there. I, you know, obviously we have customers and everything else out there. So it, it's, but we'll be yep. looking at it and it's just like, yeah, we just recalled it different based on what our personal um, experience or opinion was at that moment. Yeah. Or your personal attachment, right? I mean, you may be, you may be buddies with X driver mm-hmm. or at least closer with X driver and Rainy may be closer with Y driver. So there's always a little bit of emotion that plays into how you see it, right? Oh, I, I've I've had times where you said you're like the guy that you don't get mad, you don't blow up, but when you're angry, you watch out. Oh, yeah. I'm the opposite. I just pop off. I'm emotional. I'm loud. But two seconds later, I'm fine. Like it just, right. I'm kind of like a tea kettle or what? I just, once my whistle blows, okay, I'm done. I'm moving on, and right. I kind of forgot what happened. There's been times I've been in the grandstands. And one driver had taken out one of our other customers. Ah, motherfucker. It's like, excuse my language. You know, just screaming. Yeah, and buddy. And then I realized, wait, the guy that took out the other guy is also my customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, have that, they have that yellow, blue sticker on there too, huh? Yeah, they both have the yellow and blue sticker. And it's just like, but yeah, it's just like, oh, come on. And it's and then there's the, the times we've had our guys take each other out and we just put our heads down like, come on, guys. It's like. Yeah. They aren't on the same team, <laughs> but in our per, in our um, perspective, dude, that's our brand that just now got sidelined. Where we could have had a podium sweep, now we have no one up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, your, your, your brand, you know, crosses many, many team brands, right? Yeah. So, but in the end, there's two, there's two guys competing against each other. That's right. As, yeah. You know, it's hard to as hard as they possibly can. That's, yeah, uh, I guess that's from your standpoint, I mean, it's, as a promoter, they're all yours. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, my landlord still doesn't quite understand what I do, and I'll come back from a race weekend, and he's like, so how'd your team do? I go, well, I won every race. He goes, what? I go, yeah, I lost every race, too, but I won every <laughs> one. Like, dude, I'm the guy, I'm the guy that organizes the races, this, you know, and, and obviously I go to, club races and other events with with some customers on the shop side but, but you know we'll come back from a tucson or somewhere or sonoma back in last year yeah, yeah won every race that'd be great i was on all the podium yeah I, I get that a lot too with people that know me outside of karting oh how'd you it's always how did your race go and i just like right. oh well you know we had 10 guys on the podium this weekend they look at me cross-eyed it's like well how'd right. you have 10 guys on the podium it's like yeah. Well, we had thirty customers there. It's not. Yeah. It's not yeah. me. It's I'm just working. And, and there were and there were fifteen classes. So you know that's what they, that's the other thing they don't understand. Right? They only look at, they only see NASCAR, IndyCar, F1. It's like there's one class. No, no, yes. we have ten classes or twelve classes, and uh, so there's thirty six podium spots. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of a blast. Yeah, this is the new karting series where we just give a participation trophy out to everybody. Oh God! I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Anything else you want to cover? I don't know, man. What's on your list? <sighs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, for me, I'm just want to try to get back to racing at some point. You know, I, I think I told you earlier today when we had a little pregame chit chat. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on some of the local clubs and and what they're, what they're allowed to be able to handle and see what I can do. I mean. You know, not only for the financial standpoint, obviously. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I need a living as much as the next guy. But, but as you know, people get more excited for bigger events. So, you know, maybe if a, if a club at a certain track can pull off a couple events, maybe I'll call that club and say, "Hey, now can I come?" You know, and then and then we'll go there, or or 
you know, so I'm, I'm definitely keeping an eye on the community. Um, I'm also keeping an eye on, on neighboring states, whether it be, you know, Arizona or, I mean, uh, oddly enough, um, Chris Egger from Pat's Acres called me, you know, a couple weeks ago and, I'm and there. said, hey, if, if you can't. <laughs> Let's go. I'm what? there. <laughs> You're there, right? So, I'm so there. there. So he wanted me to get me to move the challenge up there, and I just couldn't risk it with the because Oregon is in the same boat as California. They're still on lockdown. Right? Oh yeah, they are still right. But so I said, dude, do a race. Try to put a race on. You're a club. Put a race on. You own the track. So uh, so they uh, they quietly announced yesterday that uh, that they're going to do an event May 15, 16. Um, kind of a come one all come thing. So if you look at the Pat Taker site or their, or their Facebook, um, if you if you want to get out and race and you can afford to get up to Oregon, go go try to do it. You know, um, we'll see if you can pull it off. Then then I'll, then our eyes are open. But it's it's easier for somebody who owns a track, whether it be a club or an individual like Chris, to try to pull off an event than it is for a promoter like myself or others who have to fly in people and rent the track and do all the things and then risk what's going to happen with the local officials, right? The, the local yeah. clubs kind of have a better handle on, on who is who, right? I'm, I'm sure people at Davis or Dixon know some of the local, the local town council people or Chris Egger knows his local people or, you know, whatever, whether it be Adams knows the people in Riverside or PKRA just in general. So they probably have an, uh, a much better chance of pulling something off. Well, if they're able to pull something off, I'm going to go back to the first thing I said on this on this call. If they're able to pull something off, please go support it. Don't don't be the Carter that says, "Well, I'm going to see how this one goes and see who shows up before I show up to the next one." Because <laughs> the track, the yeah. track, and the sport need you. They need you there. So please, if there's an if if a if a club or a track says, "Hey, man." We're throwing this out. We're going to see if it sticks to the wall, and we're going to do an event on this day. Load your stuff up and go. The worst thing that could happen is somebody comes and says, no, this is crazy. This is that. you got to go home. Okay, you wasted 50 bucks in gas. All right, I get yeah. it. But if you, if you sit at home and say, I'll see who shows up before I show up to the next one, nobody will go. Yeah, I, I'm and laughing then at that won't, statement because that's so true. That's and then there won't so be a next true. one. There won't be a next one. So just yeah. go. Just load your stuff up. You know what? If the race gets canceled, fine. Put some beers or some red claws if you're into that thing or whatever the hell they're called. Uh, throw some hot dogs in the in the thing and a barbecue and go barbecue. And if you have the race, go have a good time. If they say you can't race. The barbecue your stuff, have your beers, and go home and have a good. You know what I mean? Just, but just you got to go. You please, you have to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you 100 percent on that. That's a great point. Um, you know, and actually, the I I think the clubs too, they're they're just in a much better position if they actually have access to the tracks, etc. Float the idea out there, cut back 50 percent of your classes, and just say okay. We are going to run the first four classes that make it to 20 entries or 25 entries or whatever it is. Then they'll know, okay, well, we can only have 50 or 100 people here. Once we get those classes up to the, that's it. And then that kind of puts accountability back on the, on the racer as well. So that way, if you have that, you know, KT 100 piston port class that you keep trying to dredge up from the dead. You'll call your buddies like, dude, we need 15 of us to get out there and they'll give us a class. Right. Um, and, and I think, honestly, I think we're going to have to do that in this sport, at least in the foreseeable future, because someone had said, was it you that told me earlier today that California has announced, or at least the six Bay Area counties, um, extended their stay in yeah. place order till May 31st? Yeah. Bay, Bay Area counties have extended it to May 31, and as you and I both discussed, right, it's when that ends when they can decide to go into that phase one thing, the phase one, two, and three. Well, yeah, phase one, no matter what, has to take 14 days, and phase two has to take 14 days. So before we can get into actual bigger racing events, it's going to be July 1 before anybody can have, at a minimum, 
what we call a bigger carding event. Yeah. So the so the clubs are going to have to do what they can. So, and on the financial side, right? I don't mean to harp on this, but then just say, look, if a club say if a club says we're going to do these these four classes, and we know out of these four classes we're going to get forty guys, right? I'm just I'm just going to make up numbers to make it easy. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. For, it's it's forty guys. We we need forty racers here. Okay. Now. Each racer is allowed one crew or two crew, whatever. We, we get a 40 guys, we have 100 people, that's it. But if they know they're break even, they need five grand that day, and I'm just making up numbers. I need yep. five grand that day to, to pay all my officials and to pay my trophies and to pay my electric bill, and but I need five grand. The easiest way a club can do it is goes, you know, there's going to be no pit pass fee, there's going to be no nothing. 40 guys, it's 125 bucks a piece. That's our five grand. We just want to break even with this thing. Okay. Yeah. I know it's more than the than the eighty dollars we normally charge. It's one hundred and twenty five bucks. Bring your one or two people. We get our five grand. We can break even on the day, but we can provide forty of you a race day. Right? Everybody has to be a little creative. Everybody has to be able to give a little give and take. And uh, and I think the clubs can pull it off, but the people have to be a little reasonable. I just don't want to see on the internet like, like I have, you know like the Facebook thing. Oh well, you can believe it. This guy. The normal practice fee fifty bucks. Now he's charging me a hundred. I don't. I'm not even gonna go practice, dude. They're only allowing fifteen people to practice. They have to make the money somehow. Let's be yeah. fair, please. So what please. I just heard you They're say the... is you're gonna do a two race series for the first class that sells out at forty. <laughs> is that what I heard you just say? Yeah, my break even is not five thousand though. I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, well, let's we'll say it's higher, and uh, we just raised the yeah, fee. Yeah. That's... <laughs> It, or you heard it first on NorCal Carters. One class, yeah, one breaking, event. <laughs> breaking story, buddy. Breaking story. Yeah, I. I you breaking know, I, but story. I. All joking aside, I, there might actually be a lot of support for something like that, and it really just it gets the it tells you who the serious racers are from a class standpoint. Um, yeah. I mean, we look at your series. You could easily say. Uh, I'm a shifter guy, so I'm obviously going to – I'm just completely biased towards the shifters. But you could easily yeah, say, yeah. I, I know my master shifter guys. I know we could get 40 of them, and I know we can charge them X amount of dollars. And that's the only class we're running that day. But they're going to have X right. amount of laps, et cetera. That, that could actually be its own special event. Yeah, that's true. No. Well. We have I mean, to be creative. Like I said, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes open. There's a couple of tracks out there that are places. allowing people to show up with limited right. numbers. And yep, you heard it here first on NorCal Carters. The NorCal go, Shifter Shootout presented by Andy Saisman. Oh, I'll see if I know you. What was your last? What was your last question? I don't know. You had one more question. Um. My mo- my most ludicrous carding story. I don't even know. I don't even know what you want with that one. Yeah, we kind of covered that a little bit with you hitting the rock. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, I mean, it's not ludicrous, but it was it was definitely it was a long, um, it was along those lines. I got a few. Yeah, I got. Trust me, as you know. Yeah, I was. I was just trying to think of questions that were just kind of. I mean, twenty, almost thirty years total in the sport. I got. I got more ludicrous stories than than uh, than non ludicrous (laughs) stories, I suppose. The rock one is good though. I like the rock one. The, the rock, that well, proof? that's actually just creative. Yeah, uh, it works. I, I like it hearing works. those stories because it's just like, oh, that guy thought about doing that. <laughs> that one, you know, I I have another one. So my guy Eric and I, Eric and uh, a guy named Frank Powell, who was always when I raced was always my mechanic, and Frank Powell was the uh, oddest combo of a racer right which makes karting so great so frank powell uh, how old frank frank's 18 years older than me so he's 68 so i mean i did you know my serious racing probably through my mid 30s to mid 40s that's i mean that's was my serious time when i was probably raced as hard as i i did i had the money to do it so but frank was always i mean when i was in my mid 30s frank was in his mid 50s and so mid 50s and mid 60s or whatever so low 60s and Frank is a, uh, well, was he just retired as a uh, uh, professor at UCSD at the medical school 
He has a PhD in respiratory physiology, but he had the most fun being my go-kart mechanic at national races, right? Okay. So, so, and now he raced karts. 